Good evening, everyone. Before we start the meeting, as always, we ask, <coughs> excuse me, our city clerk to read the quote for the week. Madam City Clerk, would you please? Thank you. Morality is simply the attitude we adopt towards people whom we personally dislike. On the 17th regular meeting of the Common Council of Order, please call the roll. Boren? Here. Bauk? Excuse. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heideman? Here. Kittleson? Here. Kleunis? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Ryan? Here. Smith? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Verhasselt? Here. And Wangaman? Here. 15 present. Quorum is present. Alderman Hannah, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, President Hanna. Before we uh, move on to approval of the minutes, just wanted to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. Today is Monday, Thursday is Thanksgiving. It's a time to reflect, look back, and give thanks for a lot of the great things that have happened in our lives and sort of just let go of the ones that haven't been so great in our lives. Uh, I know there's a lot of things I'm thankful for in my family and I look forward to enjoying the holiday and I wish every one of you the same. President Hanna, minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd moved for the approval of the minutes and also for the approval of the special uh, Common Council meeting minutes. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Everybody none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, <clears throat> honorable members of the council, hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. To the Wellness Committee, uh, Alderperson Jean Kittleson, Marion Health, Scott Navis, William Adams, Jack Vanderweel, Patrick Dugan, Chase Longmiller, Michael Williams, the Human Resources Director, and Finance Director, and Alderperson Gisha, uh, all terms expiring uh, for Alderman Kittleson's 41408 and all the others 43008. Signed by the mayor. And that appointments will lie over. <clears throat> Next we have public forum, Madam City Clerk. Thank you. Um, first on the public forum would be Henry Capitillo. <coughs> and Mr. Capitillo, would you give me your home address, please? Yes, that's uh, 1619 North 38th Street, and that's in the town of Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. I'm here to discuss the political climate that prevails at this time and how it came about. This situation has not just occurred, but has taken several years to develop. The constant turmoil that this administration and its supporters have fueled has fostered this political climate. The following are some of the controversial issues that have loomed over this administration. The, the issue with the mayor accusing former Alderman Bonet of stealing some computer disks when leaving his job within the city of Sheboygan. The issue with the mayor's assistant, Susan Hart, and a complaint that she had against a police officer within the Sheboygan Police Department. A questionable complaint that was filed against the police by former Alderman Ratke that turned out to be unwarranted and unsubstantiated and resulted in Alderman Ratke to write a letter of apology. The potential disclosure of an issue by the mayor for former Alderman Dennis Bauman that eventually led to his resignation. The accusation by former Alderperson Rene Shusha that Officer Williams provided false information on the number of accidents in a police report and thereby lying to the council. The accusation by former Alderperson Rene Shusha that the police had closed a street at the Muth Company as a measure to receive a donation for the purchase of tasers for the police department and thereby raising some concerns on her part. The statement by the mayor and his supporters that the recall was racially motivated and those members of the recall were bigots and racists. 
The action by the mayor by gaveling me during a public forum and implying that I was being disrespectful to him and the council. The action by the mayor to try to sever an internet, internet link between a local business and a Sheboygan Police Department. The discussion that took place between Alderman Vicki Meyer and Alderman Bob Ryan. All of these became issues in the media and were distractions to the council. How do you expect to conduct the business of the city if you are constantly ex extinguishing all the brush fires that are caused by this administration and its supporters? Some action should have been taken a long time ago during some of the issues in order to set an example that there are some repercussions to people's actions. I can remember when the council was considering asking the ethics committee to look into the actions of former older person Renee Shusha. The council's vote was tied and the mayor broke the tie to not have the ethics committee look into this issue. This I believe was a turning point that basically implied that you could say and do what you wanted to do and not expect any repercussions. How do you expect the public to react to its elected officials when they are not willing to police themselves? I would also like to ask various persons to not use the terms bigots and racists as indiscriminately without thinking of how the Sheboygan community and other communities will react to these statements. Just because some people question a politician's policies and how they choose to run the city of Sheboygan, that does not make them a bigot or a racist. People can disagree with you and even not like you as a person, but that does not mean that you are disliked because of your race. For example, I know that there are quite a few individuals that do not agree with my political views and some of my presentations to the council. That does not make these individuals bigots or racists. That just makes them individuals that do not agree with my views and what I have to say. Another example is a letter that was sent to the edit editorial page by an individual who did not like the fact that I pointed out some crimes within the city of Sheboygan during one of my presentations to the council. In my, view, in my view, the person had just exercised his God-given right of free speech and had every right to vo voice his opinion, even if I did not agree with what he had to say. I myself, I myself choose to temper my use of the term bigots and races because of what they mean and how damaging they can be in a community that has various different ethnic groups. I would like to also show you what is on a website that is WTMJ Radio, where if you go to their website, it says the godfather of Sheboygan. You've got Marlon Brando, who's the godfather here, Mayor Perez, and then a picture of the godfather again. Is this how we want to be perceived as a community? Some of you may say, well, I don't care what other other radio stations say or what the community say. But I think you should because if you're trying to get people to come here as tourists, to come to the city of Sheboygan, I think you should care what other people think about this community. You don't want them to think that this community is full of bigots and racists. You want them to, to feel comfortable to come here to this community and to know that there, there can Excuse be me, descending... Excuse would you like an extra minute? Yes. Thank you. There can be descending views amongst people. And, and, and be able to have uh, reasonable discussions without having any uh, fear of any retaliations or uh, uh, other measures taken against them. A prime example of that is what uh, former Alder person um, Terry Van Akron said at the public forum on WHBL. He said, people should be able to discuss things and difference of opinions without having to worry about vendettas and retaliation. And in that I would say th that is definitely true. I think that we have to be more tolerant, more open, and to be able to look at other people's views and not to look at them as, as being uh, getting personal with you. And like I said, there's a lot of people that disagree with me, but that doesn't mean that, they, that uh, I have to consider them as enemies or to try to get back at these people. It's just... Uh, uh, things that, that happen, and I think you should have open discussions. Excuse me, Henry. Your Thank you very done. much. Thank you. Next on the list will be Mary Ryan. <clears throat> Mary, could you give me your home address, please? 
1231 North 6th Street in Sheboygan. North 6. You want to bring the mic to you so that they can, there you go. Thanks. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mary Ryan. I live in Sheboygan, have my entire life. I'm the proud wife of Alder, Alderman Bob Ryan. I have two small children. Blake is six, Abigail is three. I have a stepdaughter, Ashley. She's a teenager. I'm a professional in our community. Bob and I have been married for almost 13 years. I can say that he's my best friend. I can honestly say Bob is my other half, and my life is complete with him in it. Now, I don't want to give him a big head, because our marriage is not perfect. I don't know any marriage that may be. Marriage is a tough job, a job two people need to work at every day to make it strong. Bob and I have had many disagreements. We'll have many more. As a couple who is committed to each other, we work through those disagreements, and it's made our relationship stronger. We are equals, and we respect one another. It's no secret that I was one of those family members that was not in favor of Bob's pursuit of aldermen. You ask yourself why? At the time, Bob had responsibilities that far exceeded the hours in a day. My concern was selfish, I guess. I felt the responsibility to the city would take yet more time away from our time together and our small children. I don't feel that way any longer. I'm in full support of my husband and his passion for making our city thrive. I'm in support of my husband because his intentions for this job are the right intentions. He is genuine about his concern for our city. He is honest, sincere, caring, and highly motivated. He has integrity. He has intelligence. He has strong morals and values. We have many in this room that share those same qualities. Unfortunately, not all of us do. Last Friday, my husband set out to do the job that we, the people of the District 2, elected him to do. Just prior to him entering these chambers, he was personally attacked by Alderperson Meyer. To sum it up in my own words, Alderperson Meyer delivered the punishment for speaking out against our mayor. She began by making it clear to Bob that the mayor and herself were not happy with him. She gave Bob a clear warning telling him to watch what he said. In other words, keep quiet or she would expose the so-called rumors to expose his private life. I am horrified by these actions. The purpose of these actions was to intimidate and threaten my husband. She never once considered how the release of the information may affect me, my children, my professional career, or my husband. I could stand here tonight and explain how this has affected me and my family, but I do not believe this is simply about me and my family. I am not ashamed of the rumors or facts, if you will, that have been made front page news. I am ashamed and embarrassed by the fact that Ms. Meyer is an elected official in our great city. Her arrogance in thinking that she could manipulate my husband's thinking and compromise his integrity is sickening to me. Her actions warrant great consequence. Have you asked yourself how many others were forced to compromise their beliefs to protect their family? Alderperson Meyer not only threatened my husband on Friday, but proceeded to push the issue. When she was given an opportunity by the Sheboygan Press to provide her side, she did not deny what had transpired. She proceeded to further slander my husband by saying he has mental issues. She has absolutely no remorse for her actions. She apparently saw nothing wrong with her conduct. Some have said this issue is a distraction, that it's taking away from the council conducting the business of the city. This is not only a distraction, but a disgrace. Serious consequence must be applied to Alderperson Meyer and any other public official who thinks these tactics are acceptable. There is no excuse or explanation for this type of behavior in our trusted public official. We have many people in this room that are here to give of themselves. They are here to give their time and their talents to our city to make it a better place for all of us. They are not here for self-promotion. They are here with good intention. We teach our children not to bully one another in our schools. Should we not follow our own advice and lead by example? We teach our children the importance of honesty and treating one another as we would like them to treat us. It should be no different here. 
serious consequences necessary to restore integrity, ethics, and basic morals and values to our council. There is no gray area to this issue. I am appalled by Alderperson Meyer's behavior. It is my opinion that Alderperson Meyer is unfit for public office. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. And last on the list would be Gary Dalmas. Gary, can you give me your home address, please? 128 Crestwood Drive in Sheboygan Falls. And if you want to pull the mic down so we can... Great. You can go ahead. I'm Gary Dalmas, Chairman of the Sheboygan Development Corporation. I'm here tonight to pay tribute to Michael Muth. Michael passed away this past Wednesday in Florida. I am here as a friend of Mike Muth, but literally, there could be hundreds and hundreds of other friends that could be here in my place. Michael was one of a kind person. He was strong, yet loving. Fair, firm, but also fair. Opinionated, but also willing to listen to the other side. He was a leader, but also a yeoman. But one thing he wasn't, he wasn't afraid to take on tough issues. I have never met a man who, when asked to help, not only rolled up his sleeves, but would take off his shirt for you. There would be nobody Michael wouldn't try to help, whether it involved his family, his friends, his church, his community, his country, or even an unknown child through the Boys and Girls Club, work-bound, or as a mentor. Mike was involved. His love of Sheboygan and Sheboygan County glowed like a beacon. His continued perseverance to make Muth Company grow and thrive and stay strong through some of the most perilous times was unbelievable. I remember being with Mike at Cape Kennedy when he bought a hundred wristbands that said the famous lines from the Apollo 13 mission, failure is not an option. His comment was, I need these for my employees. Failure was never an option with Michael Muth. Yes, Michael was controversial, but his desire to make Sheboygan was a front runner in Mike's missions. All the way from the YMCA, the police station, the Chamber of Commerce Visitor Center, police taser guns, the list is endless. I can re clearly recall when the SDC had been trying for years to help acquire the South Pier. We just couldn't do it until Michael came forward with a solution. Through his own efforts, he single-handedly founded the Friends of Sheboygan, this group personally gave $500,000 through gifts and loans to the city of Sheboygan to have the money to buy the properties from Coke industry. The South Pier became a reality because of Michael Muth, the Friends of Sheboygan, and the SDC. Most people would have stopped there, but not Mike. He endlessly worked hand in hand with the city of Sheboygan and the SDC to seek the best ventures for that property. After thousands of hours of time, the dream of Blue Harbor and the city's only, only conference center was born, but he still didn't stop. He personally felt so committed that he bought the first two condos in the project, not to benefit Michael Muth, but to show his faith in the project and get it going. And with that, the rest of the South Pier started to strive, thrive. When we enjoy South Pier, we have Mike Muth to thank but it didn't end there. Then there was the Great Lakes Aerospace Science and Education Center at Spaceport Sheboygan. Glassic was a dream of Michael's. He got involved and he got involved deep. He became the chair of the Sheboygan Development Corporation and stated, let's go, and go we did. We traveled to Washington, Alabama, Houston, Cape Kennedy, Madison, Green Bay, Milwaukee, and more. Hundreds of contacts and thousands of hours, not to benefit Mike Muth, but to benefit Sheboygan, the state of Wisconsin, and the kids. He believed in it and will inspire us to make it happen. Selfishness was not in his blood, but making Sheboygan a better place ran through his veins. As I said before, Michael was one of a kind. 
his antidotes were endless. Most of us use the saying that we're running around like a chicken with its head cut off, but not Michael. His version was, he was running around like a head with its chicken cut off. The unique Mike. I could speak for hours about our friend Michael, but I would like to close with a measurable that I heard many years ago. That being, one way to measure success is if you can name five people who, who will truly miss you after your death, other than your family, you are a success. Michael doesn't have five, he has many. Michael Muth was a success as a father, a grandfather, a businessman and community leader, and last, a great friend. Goodbye, Michael. Thank you. You will be missed, but never forgotten. Thank you. Before we proceed, it, it would be proper. I, I agree with uh, Gary. Michael <clears throat> was an icon in, in the history of Sheboygan and will continue to be. I'd ask for just a brief period of silence in this honor. Thank you. Next, we have a, a public hearing. The Deputy Finance Director, Treasurer, announced <clears throat> that there will be a hearing on the proposed budget for use during 2008. All taxpayers and residents of the governmental unit will have the opportunity to be heard on the proposed budget. At this time, is there anyone that would like to address the council? Please. Yes, sir, and would you give your name, please? Ed Wachowski. And your address? 2632, 2632. 8th Street in Sheboygan. Okay, go ahead. I'm here, obviously, to talk about the budget. You might say to yourself, people aren't concerned about taxes, otherwise they would have this room filled to speak on the budget this evening. So that's a positive. I want to assure you that that's not a positive. That's a negative. Because the people that I've spoken to said, why bother go to talk to Common Council? They already have their mind made up of how they're going to vote, and it's just a waste of our time to go there and address the council that won't listen. They do feel, though, and a compliment to you, that you feel that they are much more intelligent regarding the budget than what you are. And why do I say that? It's very simple. Took almost 300 pages of printed material for you to understand the city's spending. Yet, on the web of the city, you feel that the citizens of the community can understand a budget by two pages. I think that's an insult to the individuals and the taxpayers of this community. When many of you were elected to office, you stated, that we have spending problems, not revenue problems, and that taxes are too high. I heard a story about a woman, and a senior citizen, who said taxes are too high and I may lose my home. Well, if taxes are too high two years ago, taxes were hot, too high last year, and you have done absolutely nothing to reduce the tax burden, how can you say that taxes are not too high right now? On the two sheets that are on, on the web, you have shown one sheet that shows some expenditures re not regarding the tax on property. And you've compared year to year and income year to year. Yet on page number two, when you're talking about the property tax, you do not compare last year to this year. My personal opinion, and I could go on and on, but I only have five minutes, I think it would take, it takes a lot of courage on your part to vote for this budget. A lot of courage. And why do I say that? Because in the next two years, you're going to be up for election. 
And I think it's going to be quite evident that you voted on a budget that kept taxes at the level that you said were too high. And I, I can't wait to hear your explanation of why taxes aren't too high during the election cycle. I'm appalled by this budget. I'm appalled that you should ask for public comment when you don't have a budget on the web that can be looked at and critiqued by the taxpayers of this city. It's like asking me to buy a home in Arizona from a real estate agent that shows me a picture without telling me how much ground is involved, what the taxes are, what the heating bill is, just saying, trust me, it's for your best interest. And that's exactly what you're doing with this. Uh, the newspaper has said you have a $300,000 hole in the budget. It's not what you say, it's obviously how you say it. It means that you have $300,000 that you can't increase spending by this year because you do want to increase spending. And God bless each and every one of you because you're going to be paying the taxes the same as all the rest of us are. And you've not done your job. Thank you very much. And I think I made under five minutes. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Please, sir. Mr. Capitello, I already have your address, 1619 North 38th, correct? Yes. Okay, go ahead. You know, I I've, have come to the council meetings on a number of occasions and have discussed the high costs of our property taxes and the fact that ourselves as a nonprofit has paid property taxes since we purchased our building. I just do not see why the council would not look at other avenues to generate money other than the traditional avenues that you're looking at. For example, I, I, I would say that there's quite a number of other nonprofits that are within the city. I mean, if we can afford to pay uh, over, I think over close to $50,000 in property taxes since we've had our building, I'm pretty sure that other nonprofits in this community could also put something towards the, uh, the uh, public and safety of, of uh, the city of Sheboygan. For example, I'll give you an example. We had, uh, there was an incident at the, uh, um, uh, the rehabilitation center where there was a client that was there. And I, I, in fact, I think there was a controversy because he got tasered. And the fact is that the police had to respond. They had to go there. They probably had probably two or three officers that were there that had to respond to the incident. Um, who paid for that? I mean, the officers didn't come off the clock and say, well, we're going to a nonprofit that doesn't pay taxes, so we're just going to not get paid for this, this amount of money here. No, they were paid just like if they would have been going to any other call. And I think that uh, because other, other nonprofits do receive the services that are provided within the city of Sheboygan, that I don't think it's asking too much for you to impose some kind of public protection safety fee. And it doesn't have to be a lot. It could be just something that would be uh, uh, just as a, a token, but at least it's something that will add up. And the other thing I, I would like to say is when you're looking at the budget, look at areas that are critical to the safety of the city. For example, I know that you had voted and you had approved the, the budget for the police department. But after talking to some, some of the officers, they basically told me that, you know, they're, they're really not at full capacity of staffing at this point. Sure, they did get additional officers that were the patrol officers, but they are still not at the levels that they should be for overall staffing. And I think that if you look at what the priorities should be for the city, um, should you look at providing more? When you're looking at how much crime we have in the city, if you, if you talk to any person in the city, they'll say, Sheboygan is not the city that it was 20 years ago because you have so much crime, you have drugs. It's not going to get any better. Take a page out of the history of Milwaukee where they did the same thing. They cut the police budget. Now you're talking, you talk to police officers there, and they're saying now they want to get more officers on the street, they want to get more, more people on there because they know they made a mistake. They cut the budget so much that 
Now it's the drugs and, and crime is rampant. And I think that if you're looking at the budget, look at the areas that definitely that you definitely need to fund. And yes, you know, we pay taxes, but you know what? I would rather pay more taxes knowing that that money is being spent wisely than being wasted. And sometimes when you look at some of the things that you do with developments and some of the, the breaks that you give the developers, some that are multi-million dollar corporations and you give them millions of dollars, you know, does that make sense when other people in the community that are struggling to pay their taxes, is this something that you, you know, is fair? I don't think so. I think you have to look at also in the development to make sure that, that, that developers do pay their fair share of property taxes, that they also uh, have an interest in the city. Uh, I don't think that, that uh, Sheboygan should be looked at as a community that you can come here and you can be lured by money and incentives, but it should be a community that you want to come to, to live here because of the, the community that it is. And I think that if you, if you look at the non-traditional areas that where you wouldn't have looked before and start looking at those areas and look at trying to generate more income in those avenues versus the property tax of the property tax owner. Those are the people that pay every year and every year. You have to look at other avenues to generate money. And again, I say, as a nonprofit, you know, if, if you came to me and said, you know, Henry, you don't have to pay any more taxes. We're going to take you out. I would say, no, I don't think so, because we, as an organization, have a commitment to the city. We ask for the police department to come to our building. We ask the fire department to come to our building when there's a problem. I don't think we should end up having to have the other taxpayers to pay for our burden of what we have. So I would say seriously look at this and look at the areas of public safety and protection as being your number one priority. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? President Hanna? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I would move to close the hearing. Second. Motion and second to close hearing under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearing is closed. Consent agenda. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I would move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. 16-1 through 16-20. Under discussion. Alderman Meyer. Question. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I wanted to comment before we got into the consent agenda. And at this point, I would like to apologize to Alderperson Ryan. We had a private conversation, and in that private conversation, I offended him. It won't happen again. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. 16-1 through 16-20, consent agenda. Motion and second under discussion. There being none, please call a roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Clayunis? Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 1621 to be referred. Report of officers 2, 1622 and 23. I will hold for 1643. Please make that notation. 1624, I will hold for 1635. 1625 lies over. 1626 and 1627 lies over to November 26. 1628 through 1633 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 1634, uh, same issue, I will hold for 1643. 
1635 by Alderman Meyer authorizing entering into a contract for the de detention ponds rip wrap project at the Green Wing Detention Pond at the Great Gateway Drive de Detention Pond. Al Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would also like to pull um, 1647 with this also. 16 what? 47. Okay. And I would like to ask for a motion to suspend the rules. Is there a second? Second? Uh, is there any objection? Pardon me. I'm sorry, I didn't hear who says seconded it. Thank you. Is there any objection to suspending the rules? There being none, please proceed. No. Oh. <laughs> There's an objection. There is an objection? Aye. Alderman Rinsfleisch? Well, excuse me, sir. No objection, just looking for an explanation of why. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Alderman Meyer, please continue. Um, thank you. Um, at this point, I would actually like to open the floor to Bill Bulky, our engineer. He has the explanations for this. These involve um, TIF districts and some construction that needs to be done with these ponds and these um, Con the, this reconstruction that they need to do has to be done before um, you know some of these uh, TIF districts are okay. finished. And um, so I would actually like to have Mr. Bulky. Uh, Mr. This. Bill Bulky is not a department head. I need a motion to open the floor. Absolutely. Second. 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 Any discussion on that? All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Bulky, would you please come forward to the podium? question is to explain the suspension aspect of it. All right. uh, there's been some interest in developing the lots in TID 8, which is near the Walmart complex where our uh, detention ponds are, but we cannot develop that due to the current zoning. Um, the zoning is a SI, suburban industrial base, that upon TIF law pertains to the amount of industrial commercial allowed in that in industrial district. Zoning cannot be changed until the uh, tax incremental finance district is closed and all expenditures, all expenditures in the TID need to be made before this district is closed. At uh, time is of the essence for this project. We need to try to close it out by the end of the year and uh, we're asking for suspension for that reason. Okay, any further questions? Thank you, Mr. Bulky. Uh, Alderman Meyer, we would need a what is yeah. it? Alderman to contract uh, a motion to uh, that is not what, what yeah, is yeah we need a motion to accept and file the RO accept and adopt the RC and yeah. pass the resolution okay well we got three things here we got yeah. uh, accept and file 1635 accept and file 1624 and then pass the res put the we resolution need to upon vote it. In there was no objection. There was no objection. Okay, but there was the rules okay. have been suspended. Okay. okay. So moved. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. <clears throat> 1636 by Alderman Hannah, Meyer, and Montemayor establishing a wellness committee to review, plan, and oversee the city wellness programs. President Hannah. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Do I need to suspend the rules? To move well, no. 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 Just put okay. the resolution. I'll put the resolution upon his passage. So, motion and second. Under discussion, Vice President Bourne. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. I would like, like to make a friendly uh, amendment to this resolution. Uh, under the be it further resolved, uh, starting with the, uh, well, I'll read it. Be it further resolved that the committee shall have as its purpose the development of recommendations on a wellness program to be submitted no later than January 31st, 2008 to the Common Council for approval. Uh, plan the wellness program offered to city employees and oversee its progress uh, providing reports and after the word reports I would like to add to include employee utilization of the wellness program by department and then reading on on a quarterly basis to the group health insurance committee 
and the City Finance Committee. Second. There's a motion, there's a motion to amend and a second under discussion on the amendment only. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I couldn't agree more with Alderman Bourne. Uh, this is such an important component to making our move forward in controlling insurance costs that anything we can do to monitor and encourage participation is time and energy well spent. Thank you, President Hanna. On the amendment, any further discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Now we need a motion to uh, put the resolution upon its passage as amended. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I put the <clears throat> resolution upon its passage as amended. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Ringsleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mayor, excuse me. Um, I have a little concern here, a little question. We're asking them to discuss and develop a uh, wellness committee uh, to create a program uh, to report to us on a quarterly basis, yet it expires in the end of April of 08, the committee. So are we setting a short-term committee to just discover a plan, or are we establishing a committee to oversee a long-term plan? Uh, if we are simply establishing a wellness committee as a short-term committee, one that, that will disappear after a short period of time, that, and then the program itself reports back to us. Uh, I am for that. Uh, however, if we're accepting a committee that is in existence for a long period of time that oversees the committee, I think we have other units of government that currently do, can, and, and will overlook that. So just looking for clarification on that, please. Mm -hmm. President, President Hanna? Sure. Thank you. Uh, the, the purpose of the Wellness Committee really is to establish protocol uh, early on in the stage of this process. Uh, the actual ongoing process of wellness and participation is pretty well documented uh, in the industry standards. So this is really to kickstart it to make sure all the departments are represented in the early end of the process. Any further discussion? <clears throat> there being none, please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? For Hasselt, Wangaman, Boren, Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. and Heidemann. Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Sixteen thirty-seven by Alderman Meyer, Hannah, and Boren, authorizing the risk manager to negotiate settlement of liability insurance claims not to exceed fifteen thousand dollars without prior approval from the risk management committee or the common council. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Good. Honor. I would like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Motion and second to suspend. Any objection to suspension? Please explain suspension. Thank you. Um, we are in a situation right now where our human resources director has left and we have an interim director. And what we are doing is just changing the wording of an already existing policy so that the interim director can continue her duties as, as she's supposed to. But I would also like to make an amendment to this resolution. Okay. I would like to change all the uppercase oh, oh, R and M. Excuse me. Oops. Sorry, what? Oh, first, first. that. Okay. Yes. Motion to put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Now you can make a motion to amend. Sorry. And now I would like to make a motion to amend the resolution by changing all the capital R and M's, which are primarily just risk manager, to lowercase letters R and M. And that was through the attorney. He advised that we change the way this is worded. Okay. So there's a, a motion. Was there a second to that amendment? Second. Second. Under discussion on the amendment. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the suggestion was... Uh, in checking around, uh, Susan Hart is not a, quote, risk manager. That's not her title. No one in the city has that title. And when it's capitalized, the presumption is that that's somebody's title. Uh, put it in lowercase is to say whoever is the risk manager, sort of generically, whoever is managing the insurance claims would have this authority. Okay. Any further discussion on the amendment? Change uppercase to lowercase? There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Need a motion to put it upon. Motion to put the resolution upon its passage as amended. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. 
There be a none, please call the roll. Cleonis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1638 through 1642 lies over. 1643 to be referred. Norman uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just uh, before we refer this, uh, just a few comments on this, if I may, uh, regarding this. Um, obviously, I think we've all received phone calls and emails and comments uh, from our constituents, uh, fairly disgusted, I think, with the behavior and, and the attack. Uh, and one of the things I put into my campaign literature is that it's time for the politics of personal attack to cease. Uh, people want us to function as a governing body, one that represents them. And they, right now they don't see that our behavior within this council uh, represents them at all. Um, my second concern a little bit is, as we're sending it to Ethics Committee, all the documents uh, that, that are the three documents, uh, again, this is a, something I brought up my first term on council, is Ethics Committee really an appropriate uh, a committee for this? Ethics, in my definition, was does someone have personal or monetary gain uh, ethically? Are we using the office to benefit ourselves? And I think in the event that occurred, um, which we just heard an apology for, uh, and, and it sounds to me as in the middle that it did happen, um, that I don't think there's a personal gain necessarily with that. Is there a political gain? Perhaps, but that's not in part of ethics. Uh, it's everything we do can or cannot have some political gain or benefit to what we do here in council. Um, so I'm a little concerned that even if we send it to there, what are we really going to investigate? Did the event happen? Yeah. We just heard that it did happen. Um, does she apologize? Yeah, she just apologized. Um, so I, you know, we have a he said, she said issue, but I think we've already achieved the goal of what an, an ethics committee would be. Um, it, it will look like we're doing something, and that's exciting to we can show off to our constituents that, aha, we have a committee. We're going to investigate this. But what are we really going to do? We're doing another committee, another investigation, dragging the council through the mud some more. And I think we've already come down to the bottom of, of the problem and actually reached the solution. Uh, they're looking for us to have leadership, looking for us to have guts, not to continue point fingers at each other. Um, and the you know, leadership part of that is I think we have to grow thick skin and we have to grow some bigger ears. Thick skin because, as you all know, not everybody in your constituency voted for you. There's people that do disagree with you, uh, all the aldermen, uh, in, in, in that disagree with us. They're not all going to like us all the time, and we have to be able to take those comments uh, and then big ears to listen. What is the heart of the matter? What are people really saying? Why are they disagreeing with us? Are they frustrated that they're not being heard? Uh, and I think we need to grow both of those, thick skin. So we know it was a personal attack. Perhaps, but I don't think we just heard the announcement. Um, however, it was also responded to personally. Uh, my understanding from the press is that the press had to call the alderman, Meyer, to ask if, what, if that's what you said. They had no idea what was said until the alderman that was attacked, Alderman Ryan, called the press and continued this process. Um, so again, what, are, what we'll be investigating? My now 13-year-old stepson, uh, when he was at Grant, had an issue where a bully pushed him down. What did he do? He pushed back, and he got in trouble the second one around. Uh, and the lesson there that we tried to give them is when people disagree with you or try to impose their will on you, you have to be a better person. You have to stand up for your rights, and you have to walk away. And you have to be willing to do that. And if the attack that we heard in the council uh, was not able to be walked away, uh, it was it libelness, um, well, that's an issue that someone should seek an attorney for. Um, the comments I heard today were, were many fold is both he said and she said issues, they're both tired of it. Uh, and both the comment made uh, should probably not have been done outside the city council. We hear that in Mitten. But then the response should not have been made in the press. The response should have been made personally. The response should have been, uh, I asked for a, a uh, apology because you've really hurt my family you, and you've, you know, you've concerned, my kids are concerned and what have you, what the threat means. Not bringing us all back into it again. Um, and if we refer, it's going to continue. And I, as far as I can tell, it's already been done. Um, so I'll, actually, I'll make a motion. And I don't expect anyone to follow. Uh, and that's OK. Uh, but I'm trying to show some leadership here to say that 
we've come to the bottom of this. I will make a motion to file the three documents regarding the Ethics Committee. And in addition, I'll make a motion to publicly censure Alderman uh, Meyer for her comments, which she has apologized for. In addition, censure Alderman Ryan for going to the press instead of handling this either in-house or personally and continuing the, the, the argument here publicly once again. Um, so I'll make those five motions. I thank you. Be a leader. Here's your chance to say we're done with this. We're tired of the personal attacks. We don't want to hear anymore. And we do want to progress on with the government, the operation of the city, uh, and leave all this behind us. Uh, and that is our opportunity right here. Thank you. <clears throat> the motion is to file and censure Alderman Meyer and Alderman Ryan. Under discussion, Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Mayor. And uh, thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch. But uh, I could disagree with you, uh, could not disagree with you more. What we have here is not an issue of thick skin. Thick skin is what it took for me to go to the Sheboygan Press and say, this is what happened. This is called intimidation. This is called blackmail. To put it lightly, when Alder Person Meyer said, do you have a minute, and called me out, and right outside of these doors, said to me, the mayor and I are very disappointed with you. We're very disappointed in you. And I said, I could give a flying with a expletive after it, whether you're disappointed in me or not. I said, I don't need to impress you. She said, you're not impressive. I've documented all this. I documented it immediately after it happened. So I would not make up maybe some extra little niceties in my little mind. Alder Person Meyer, I would like to hear why she did this. Why would she couple with, I'm disappointed in you. Why would she add to that, you better be careful because there's rumors out there about you. You better be careful because there's rumors out there about you. Oh, what kind of rumors? Rumors about your drinking? Were you drunk when you talked to the Sheboygan Press the other day? Rumors that your wife kicked you out of the house and you had to spend a week in a local hotel. How would you feel if this happened to you? Rumors that your family never wanted you to run for alderman. Oh, Vicki, what other rumors? Rumors that you might run for mayor. I said, which has not been published, and I'm sure Alderperson Meyer will acknowledge this. She seems to acknowledge everything else. I said, she also said to me, the mayor has had, has had to pull your foot out of your mouth on many an occasion. I said, Vicki, people that follow people blindly end up going down in flames with them. She can refute this if she'd like. She said, I'm not impressed with you. And the mayor's not impressed with you. And you better watch yourself. Why would a person drag me out of this council chambers and say this to me? What's the purpose of it? There's only one purpose. Because it started with, I am disappointed in you. And it ended with, you better watch what you say because there's rumors out there about you. What was I supposed to do? I had two choices. I could either do as other people have done in the past, that maybe is not factual, but I think if there's an investigation, it will become factual. I could go and crawl into a corner and be quiet and maybe not make anybody disappointed with me in the future. I went home immediately following this meeting, headed straight out the door. My wife and kids didn't realize it would be a 20-minute council meeting, which I didn't either, and they were out. And I sat down and documented this for the purpose of having it. And the more I documented it, the more I said, she's not getting away with this. Because this was pure intimidation. Pure 100% intimidation. 
That is exactly what it was. You better watch what you say because there's rumors out there about you. They're not rumors. They're facts. I admit it. Okay? My life is in the public eye. My wife and I had a disagreement. Yes. Have I drank too much once or twice in the past? Yes, I have. Absolutely. <clears throat> Did my family not want me to run for this public office? My wife confirmed that tonight. So what was her purpose? What was the purpose of it? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. And if we say, well, OK, I, he shouldn't have gone to the press. It was a private conversation. What was the purpose of the private conversation? The purpose of the private conversation was to tell me to shut my mouth. That was the purpose of the private conversation. I'm hoping. When it came time to discuss the insurance issue, I planned on discussing it that evening. I wanted to have conversation on it. When it came up time for discussion, to tell you the truth, I was speechless. What she did, did it affect what happened in these council chambers? You're damn right it did. Did she intend it to do that? I hope not. Because if that's part of her intentions, this is bigger than her just trying to get at me personally. She did succeed in having me not discuss the insurance issue. But she didn't succeed in having me vote no. And that says something about the integrity of some other people on this council, like Alderman Hanna and Alderman Gisha, that worked their butt off on this resolution. I wanted to have it up for discussion to see if we shot down this version, if we could possibly bring in the other version with another special meeting. I wasn't able to say that because I wasn't able to speak. Alderperson Meyer, your apology to me is not accepted, number one. Because you don't mean it. It's been 10 days. I haven't heard a peep out of you. It's been 10 days. You don't need to apologize to me. You need to apologize to my family. You need to apologize to your constituents is who you need to apologize to. As for me, this needs to go to the Ethics Committee. This needs to be investigated fully. I would love to see Alderperson Boren as the chair of that committee because he is a man of honor and is impartial. And I would love to see this referred to so that we don't wrap our police department up in another investigation where they'll be slandered with, oh, they're, they're not doing it right, they're taking you know, Ryan's side, or they're doing this, or they're doing that. I would like to see this referred to the Wisconsin Department of Justice. They have created in 2003 a unit called the Public Integrity Unit that falls directly under Attorney General Van Hollen. If they would have the time for this to come in and find out what really happened and see the big picture, and, and this is not a conspiracy on my part. I never wanted this to happen. But when somebody comes at me with my personal life and it changes the outcome of what can happen in these council chambers, that is not right. That is unethical, that is immoral, and it may be illegal. And it needs to be investigated. And to tell you the truth, if it is investigated, and all the person Meyer is found to be indeed out of line, I will not be satisfied myself with a censure. Because somebody who would do this to slap them on the wrist, why would they care? If they've just threatened you, if they tried to, tried to maybe change the outcome of a public decision, why would they care if they, somebody says bad, bad and slaps them on the wrist? I would be satisfied with nothing else than to see Alderperson Meyer removed from office. But it needs to be investigated for the sake of the integrity of this council. I am incensed. I told myself I wouldn't get upset this evening. But the more I think about it, the more I say that justice needs to be served. Thank you. Any further discussion? Alderman Gisha. 
Thank you, Mayor Perez. Um, I figured I'd better say something, seeing my name is on this resolution. As unusual it is for me to be kind of in middle ground <laughs> on anything, I guess um, maybe that's where I am at this moment. I did sponsor this resolution, and I don't need to go into why or my feelings regarding it, as that's been fairly documented in the media and is documented on 1643. Uh, I would like to say that I had no input from any alderman, any city official, any anyone in putting this together. No one called to urge me. No one called to help me. No one called to, er to egg me on. It's all me. The other part is I also then never reached out to any older person. I never reached out to say, hey, how do you feel about this? How are you going to vote on this? How are you going to do that? I've had several conversations with many people in this room, and uh, to their integrity, never brought it up. Because I wanted this body to move forward with this and handle it in a professional way. Uh, you can't help but have emotions get into it. I understand that. Um, I, I, I do disagree with uh, my colleague, Alderman Reinflesch, to also censure Mr. Ryan, Alderperson Ryan. I think that's, that totally is, is, is off the mark. Um, frankly, if someone made an attack on my family, publicly or privately, um, my response would have been far more vicious than putting a, likely, than putting a pen to paper. Alderman Ryan had every right to go to the Sheboygan Press and do what he did. It's his right as an alderman, as a citizen, and as a recipient of uh, those actions. Paragraph four, whereas these unrefuted and potentially unethical and improper action cast a cloud over the integrity of the entire council and damaged public trust in our deliberations as a body, and our integrity in the community. That's what it was all about with me. It's our integrity in the community because that's all we got in this room. That's it. Uh, and as far as referring it to the ethics board, um, I think in reading of the ethics board language, uh, this more, there's language in there that more than adequately covers uh, actions other than just monetary or personal gain. Uh, it talks a lot about any breach of public integrity, particularly section 2-267 I feel is very clear and gives latitude to the ethics board. I don't believe it should be discussed here, right, or whether it's right or wrong. The correct place is the ethics board. That's what it's for. I ask that this be moved forward and uh, that we handle it in the proper venue, and that being the ethics board. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. I think Alderman Rinfleisch remembers very clearly the workshop regarding ethics that we were part of about five years ago and how it came about that we had this workshop because of this kind of promotion. And the workshop, with lots of questions, made it very clear, repeatedly, it must involve monetary gain. I have here the Code of Ethics thing, pages, pages out of our code book. I don't think you all want to carry this big code book around. But I've been here long enough that I was in on one of the big books. The Declaration of Policy, Ethics Board. And I do see what the attorney who is instructing us regarding the Ethics Board meant. In the Declaration of Policy, Section 2, 263, the purpose of this article is to establish guidelines for ethical standards of conduct for all such officials and employees by setting forth those acts or actions that are incompatible with the best interests of the city and by directing disclosure by such officials and employees of private, financial, or other interest in matters affecting the city. It goes on to say that it does not have anything to do with disagreements. It talks about the ethics board. It talks about the responsibility of public officials and employees. Now we get to the violations. The responsibility of public officials and employees was the first one. Should not exceed their authority or breach the law or ask others to do so. Use of public property. Shall, no city official or employee shall request or permit the unauthorized use of city-owned vehicles, equipment, materials, or property for personal convenience or profit. 
obligations to citizens. No city official or employee shall grant any special consideration, treatment, or advantage to other citizens beyond that which is available to every other citizen. Conflict of interest. No city official or employee, whether paid or unpaid, shall engage in any business or transactions or shall act in regard to financial or other personal interest, direct or indirect, which is incompatible with the proper discharge of his official duties in the public interest, contrary to this article, or which would tend to impair his independence of judgment. Incompatible private employment. Disclosure of confidential information. It was made very clear numerous times when we have a closed session you turn in your minutes or your notes. You don't even keep those with you. No city official or employee shall, without proper legal authorization, disclose confidential information. <coughs> Gifts and favors. Re receipt of a gift. Receipt of mementos. It even gives a monetary value of what we can take. Representing private interests before city agencies. No city officer or employee shall appear on behalf of any private person other than himself, his spouse, or minor children before any city agency. Contracts with cities. Disclosure of interest in legislation. And I think that's probably the one that got Mayor Schneider into trouble. And com campaign contributions. We questioned the teacher, the attorney, who was giving us the workshop repeatedly about this sort of thing. And he said, it must involve a monetary gain. Thank you. Oh, Ryan, Ryan, second time, sir. Thank you again, Mayor. Um, I didn't realize that this was a, a workshop tonight on, uh, on the code of ethics, but I think that Attorney McLean would probably be uh, a bit more schooled on this than uh, somebody who went to a workshop five years ago. Um, what I have to say here is, okay, everybody on this council, it's a free for, all, free for all from here on out. Your private lives are on the table because anybody can use them against you. Is basically what we're saying here. If our code of ethics only states that we have to have a monetary gain in order to be unethical. We have to have monetary gain or a monetary conflict of interest or something of the sort. I, I would believe that somewhere in the code of ethics, there has to be something about being ethical. I would sure as heck hope so. Because I don't think this is a, uh, I don't think that this should be a, a lesson on the code of ethics tonight. I think this should be the question of whether something potentially unethical was committed and whether we should look into that or whether we should crawl under rocks so when this happens to the next guy and somebody says, I heard this about you, that that person doesn't go to the media, they don't want to put their family through this, so what they do is they crawl under a rock and go away and they become ineffective. Because if I did not come forward with this at this point, it would be a little cloud over my head. And the next time I decided to open my mouth, Maybe that cloud would grow bigger. Because if it worked for somebody to say, we found out this, this, and this about you, oh boy, I bet you they could just keep on digging and maybe find some stuff from 15 years ago. Has anybody else in this council ever been married? Anybody ever been married twice? You might have had some marital problems somewhere in your life. This council owes it to the public to do something. Because if we tell the public that the Code of Ethics states that we can't make money off of being councilmen, and as long as we don't do that, we can do whatever the heck we want to, something's wrong with this. I would like Attorney McLean's opinion on this. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Um, the workshop wasn't just something we happened to be in on. It was specifically for the aldermen. It was done by former Mayor Schramm. He purposely had Attorney Beesing from the county come and do the workshop for us. It wasn't just any old person. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, too, would like uh, Attorney McQueen's opinion on this. I just... I'm going to be careful with what I say. Right now, I just want to say, wow, because this is amazing. In six years, I haven't seen anything like this. 
But uh, I just want to say that the reason why I second an element mind flash motion is because people I talk to, people who don't really necessarily care about politics, they just basically said, tell them to stop fighting and acting like kids. And I think that's what Elman Ryan Flesh's motion did. And that's why I seconded it. Thank you. Thank you. I have one more on the manager. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I came here tonight intending probably to move to file. Uh, I spoke to no other person prior to this evening on purpose. My basic sense was oftentimes things are misinterpreted when spoken in certain situations. And there's a lot of misunderstanding that can follow. And that kind of thing should never end up in the public sphere as it has. Um, I would like to point out under section 2, 267 of our articles here regarding ethics, there are open-ended general statements that would be applicable to tonight's conversation. And at the end of paragraph A, it simply says, conduct in both official and private affairs should be above reproach so as to foster respect for all government. That clause speaks to tonight's issues. The problem with this clause is that it's very vague. And if the council would, by intention, pursue aggressively uh, and proactively all sorts of gray areas, we would be inappropriately uh, bringing personal issues to the public attention and taking energy away from the public business that is our primary calling. Uh, however, by virtue of the intensity of what's been present, pre presented tonight, I do believe that we need to take this to the Ethics Board. In that venue, we can further explore this. Um, but I think we need to note this clause here and its clarity in general terms that gives us clear authorization, but that at the same time provides an open door that can be quite problematic if we aren't careful with what we're about. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and that open door is actually what I want to comment on, uh, that gray area. By no means is my intention uh, to file uh, a means to simply slap on the wrist and to uh, shove this under the carpet. Um, again, state again that, that I have always been against the politics of personal attack, and there's far too much of that. Um, but that open door is, is that open door, is, is if we start investigating uh, comments uh, and behavior. Uh, no one here is going to be above reproach in some degree. I am one of those that Alderman Ryan has spoke about. I have an ex-wife. I'm currently remarried. I have two wives. Everybody knows that. Not a big deal. But if we investigate in our own body, our own personal self, I think that's the open door that we're creating. Uh, if we dislike a vote uh, to move forward through that. Um, so I, I, it's not that I want to close that door, um, but that's not for us to investigate. That is for the press to investigate. That is for our public to care about and vote uh, how we do it. It's not necessarily for us to, to do it amongst ourselves. Um, the reason I say that is, is because it is a free-for-all, to use Alderman Ryan's word. It's been a free-for-all when you signed up and put your name on the ballot. Uh, records are public. People care passionately about issues. People ran against us. People you know, used rumor and innuendo uh, to, to get positions. Um, it, it is that way. You know? And, and if, if, if it's a shame that it has to be at this local level, the small level, all we want to do is try to do what's best for the city, but it still is that way. And we've taken some really hot button votes this year. Um, and I'm not up for re-election this year, but next year, you know, those, hot, those hot button issues are going to come back. And someone who really feels strongly against me will probably use whatever they can to vote me out because they felt strongly against an issue how I voted for. Well, that's part of the job that we took when we came here. Um, and by opening that door and investigating these issues amongst ourselves, um, unless it's to me it's obvious that it is not, well, not obvious that we're investigating a personal or financial gain, uh, that I think then we're, we're trying to modify behavior, and that's, that's our, our constituents' job to, to decide. Second point, though, is, is not a slap on the wrist. Can someone tell me the last time somebody was censured in this body? It has been a long time. Um, and by this body taking that action and doing a censuring, it is saying, hey, you stepped over the line. We do have guidelines amongst ourselves. We're not going to investigate within those guidelines, but we have them. When you cross that line, there will be a slap on the wrist publicly. 
And now your constituents have to make that decision if you're going to ele re elect or re-elect based on that history that way. So I, I disagree with Alderman Ryan saying that, that it's not a big issue. I think it's a huge issue by being, being censured publicly in this body. Um, uh, it is an emotional issue too, but you know, the comment that I heard today is, she's not getting away with this. Sounded a lot like a threat and intimidation to me. And that concerns me. The whole reason why I want to do this is so, and to use Alderman Vanderweel's words, is so we can stop acting like children and move forward. It is an emotional issue. People have been attacked. There is no denying that. But what are we going to investigate? We're going to find out that he was attacked. We're going to find that out. And guess what? We already know that. She already apologized for that. And perhaps there's more apologies coming. I can't speak on her behalf. So I ask that we to lower the passion, lower the emotional level, and do what our constituents want us to do. And that is to take action, censor, move forward, especially at a time like this with our budget issues are looming so large. So I urge you to do that, please. Um, um, I, I agree with uh, Alderman Reinflesch. We do, when you run for re-election, you take daggers from everywhere. Uh, and that happens. I also have an ex-wife. Uh, <laughs> uh, a very nice one. And they, uh, you do take that kind of criticism during an election from all sorts of different people from all sorts of different places. I just wouldn't expect it to come from somebody in this body who's, who's supposed to uphold the public trust and foster good relations with our citizen and their trust in government. That's the difference to me. I have nothing to gain by introducing this. I have more to lose than to gain. I just thought it was the right thing to do. And I still believe after all this discussion that the Ethics Board is the place to do it. That's why I suggested the Ethics Board. It's the proper venue. We had great discussion here, but I think this great discussion should be in the Ethics Board where it belongs. The end result could be the same, the end result as Alder Person Reinflesch suggests, or it could be nothing. At very least, at very least, having both Alderman Meyer and Alderman Ryan, as was previously suggested, to both be censured, I think is an injustice. Um, and I have no personal alliance with Alderman Ryan. I've enjoyed working with Alder Person Meyer. Uh, I regret that this is going on. I'd love to put this behind us. And to me, the only place to do that is the ethics board. That's, in my opinion, what it's for. And I think we'd all like to hear what attorney, if Attorney McLean feels that it is appropriate to use. Thank you. We also need all the witnesses out there. Alderman Mutarello, you've gone twice, sorry. Anybody else? Alderman Hassan. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is a tough issue for me as well. I mean, I can certainly emp emp empathize with Alderman Ryan and his, and his wife, Mary. I mean, having a young family, young children, and being involved in politics, I can relate 100%. Um, I simply cannot imagine being put into this sort of situation on his part. Um, I do not think he should be censured in this situation. Um, although, I think I should note that it is ironic that the comment that probably started all this would also fly in the face of the ethics code, which, as Alderman Manny pointed out, you know, we, as aldermen, should be fostering respect for all government. The things that we say, the actions that we take, should be fostering respect for one another. So, um, but again, I don't want to go there. I don't want to dig anything else up. I would like to move on. Um, and again, I'll lean back to Attorney McLean. I poured over this document, the ethics code, all afternoon, trying to read into it as much as I can, I'm trying to take into as many perspectives as I can from different people. I am curious as to the part of this that you would hang your head on. I think it would be 2-267, as Alderman Manny pointed out. I think that's where it's probably at, but I'm curious to get your legal opinion. From a personal standpoint, having witnessed Sheboygan politics for the last five years where I've really paid attention to Sheboygan politics more than just the headlines, I would really hate to see this council get mired back into uh, a quagmire of he said, she said. And that's, that's one thing that stands out with me about this again. And I empathize with Alderman Ryan and his wife. I'm certainly not condoning what took place. But this was a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Um, so I don't know that we're going to gain a whole lot information-wise. I think we heard Alderman Ryan's story. And I don't doubt it. We've heard Alderman Meyer's story. I don't know that we'll gain a whole lot seeing that it was one-on-one. -on -one. Nobody was within earshot to confirm or deny what was said. So I, I worry that the only thing that can be gained by taking this any further 
would be more hard feelings and more headlines in the newspaper. And I, I don't know that that's going to serve the value for the city of Sheboygan. We have one more alderman, and we'll let Attorney McLean speak. Alderman Heidelman. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm not a child, and I was elected by my constituents, and I'm going to support this resolution because I hold myself to the highest standards representing my constituents, and I believe that's what they want me to do, and uh, I'm in support of this going to the Ethics Committee. Thank you, Alderman Heidelman. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so it is an unfortunate situation. Uh, the city's code of ethics was adopted pursuant to uh, section authority under section 19.59 of the Wisconsin statutes entitled Codes of Ethics for Local Government Officials, Employees, and Candidates that authorizes local governments to adopt codes of ethics. And I should point out that the state code of ethics for local government officials, employees, and candidates has uh, two primary prohibitions. Uh, uh, number one, no local public official may use his or her public position or office to gain, uh, obtain financial gain or anything of substantial value for the private benefit of himself or herself or his or her immediate family. And second is no person may offer or give to a local public official directly or indirectly, and no local public official may solicit or accept from any person directly or indirectly anything of value if it could reasonably be expected to influence the local public official's vote, uh, et cetera. <clears throat> the, uh, the city's ethics code is, is very similar uh, in many respects to the language in the state ethics code. Um, the, the cities, however, has a couple of provisions. The declaration of policy is set out a little more fully in our code. And uh, section 2-267, the responsibility of public officials and employees is a little different than in the state code. Uh, 2-263, declaration of policy is basically stating the policy of the code. It's not setting forth what the, is required and mandated or what's not, but uh, I believe Alderman uh, Montemeyer read this previously, and I'll read it again. The purpose of these, this article, being the Code of Ethics, is to establish guidelines for ethical standards of conduct. Establish guidelines for ethical standards of conduct for all such officials and employees by setting forth those acts or actions that are incompatible with the best interests of the city and by directing disclosure by such officials and employees of private financial or other interests and in matters affecting the city. So the declaration of policy is to set forth specific acts or actions that are incompatible with the best interests of the city. Uh, <clears throat> 2-267 has been referred to entitled Responsibility of Public Officials and Employees and speaks of fostering respect of all government. And the language that's been cited previously, their conduct in both their official and private affairs should be above reproach so as to foster respect for all government. Uh, that's, in my view, the aspirational goal of why these, this code is in place. Uh, it's similar to the Code of Professional Responsibility for Attorneys. There are mandates and then there are sort of aspirational goals. Uh, the aspirational goal and the, the theory, uh, other than what's in black and white as do's and don't do's, is that this will be foster respect for all government and will be in the public interest. Uh, in practice, the, the Code of Ethics sets forth rules of conduct that are do's and don'ts. And generally, there are two kinds of restrictions. Uh, I would notice again that that aspirational language says should be above reproach. It doesn't say shall be above reproach. Um, and certainly, should be, uh, but it's an aspirational goal and not a mandate. 
The mandates in the code, similar to the mandates in the state code of ethics, uh, again, two kinds of restrictions. First, restricts an official or an employee from personally profiting from holding public office or employment, uh, apart from the receipt of their salary. Second, restricts an official from participating in decisions in which the official has a personal financial interest. Uh, and then we go into specifics. I believe Alderman Montmeyer pointed out these other sections. Use of public property. No city official or employee shall request or permit obligations to citizens. No city official or employee shall grant a conflict of interest. No city official or employee, whether paid or unpaid, shall engage in any business or transaction or shall act in regard to financial or other personal interest. <clears throat> uh, direct or indirect, which is incompatible with the proper discharge of official duties in the public interest contrary to this article or which would tend to impair his independence of judgment or action in the performance of his official duties. Uh, incompatible private employment, disclosure of confidential information, gifts and favors, representing private interests before city agencies, contracts with city, disclosure of interest in legislation and campaign contributions. Those are all shall type mandates that are specifically governed by the code that are do's and don'ts as opposed to sort of aspirational guidelines. Uh, if you go to the, uh, the state ethics board's uh, website, they've got listing of advisory opinions on uh, the state's code of ethics and how you apply it um, as it relates to local government officials. And you look at that, every opinion deals with the shalls and the shall nots. They deal with accepting gifts, uh, the state level lobbying activities, uh, conflicts of interest, uh, gifts and favors uh, is a big one. Use of public property. Those are the do's and don'ts of the ethics code. Uh, and I, I certainly understand that, uh, you know, the comment that if, if it doesn't cover, you know, unethical conduct, how can you say we have an ethics code? But uh, the do's and don'ts are shalls in, in the code. The remainder, while I think are certainly important to give the flavor as to what the, uh, uh, what the ordinance is getting at, they're more aspirational and uh, reflect perhaps the spirit as, a, as opposed to the letter of the law. Um, you know, as it stands right now, the, the motion is to refer the document to the Ethics Committee. Um, that's a decision the council needs to make. Uh, that referral is not taking action one way or another on the resolution requesting an investigation. So if the council wishes to further discuss this and the appropriateness of it under the ethics code and wants to do that in the framework of the ethics board, um, that's certainly up to the council. Um, but I, I do believe, again, that, uh, and there, there are other Outside of the city's ethics code, there are other uh, issues that that come into play, uh, or avenues. Perhaps there's, you know, perhaps tort liability, civil liability, uh, perhaps criminal liability. Those things could be looked at. Um, reference to the uh, public integrity unit, of the attorney general's office. That's one opportunity as well, but. Uh, in order to be a pure violation of the city's ethics code, I think it needs to fit within those parameters that are shalls under the code. Um, so I guess that's that's my opinion. Alderman Rinfleisch, given that explanation, do you wish to split the question? 
Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if it's okay with this, the Alderman Vanderwiller who seconded my motion, I'd like to change my motion. Pardon me? If it's okay with uh, Alderman Vanderwiller who seconded the motion, I'd like to change my motion. Uh, and change it instead to file, and that's the four documents, not three, as I previously stated, uh, and to censure uh, uh, Alderman um, Vicki Meyer at this point in time alone. That'd be my motion. The motion is to file the four documents. Those documents? There's the four documents, that, the three we held over, plus 1643. For this one, file those four um, and censure as a, as a common counsel, Alderman Vicki Meyer. Is there a Just second to that? So it's changing my previous motion. Motion dies for second. Who second? I There's a motion and a second to file. Sorry, order. Order the uh, original motion was uh, the second did not agree to my modifying the motion. So we still have that motion standing right now. I thought you withdrew your motion. You didn't withdraw your motion. The well, I withdrew my motion, but doesn't the second have to also withdraw the second? Not necessarily. You've got a brand new motion before. You withdrew your motion. It's the second withdrawn other than Vanderweel. Yes, please. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I feel it's necessary to explain. I didn't want to withdraw my motion because it's right now where he said, she said, and where I come from, he said, he said she said, you're 50% liable. So for me to say just one person, I don't have the complete facts, so that's why I'm not going to withdraw my motion. Okay, so the motion stands. Motion, <coughs> is, motion is to file and censure both aldermen. Okay, can I have a clarification before we go any further? Yes. Because your three documents, we have four here. I realize you want to change that, but what were the three that you decided to file? Because we have two ROs and two resolutions. The, the ones we, we held were 1622, 23, and 1634. Is, is that what you wish? I'll need to get permission with, from the second. Again, um, I was not specific on the three documents. I simply said the three documents, but I meant to say it was all four documents on the initial motion. OK. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Call the roll. So this. Uh, oh. Under discussion. We have, sorry, we had, I missed Oliver Montemayor first. Sorry about that. Um, thank you, Your Honor. If if we were to to um, file this and then censure both, wouldn't we simply wouldn't we just have acted as the ethics board by doing that? You're not convening as an ethics board. So the, the, it would be the council censuring the two of them. Yes. Thank you. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, uh, Mayor Perez. Um, one thing, if I could ask uh, City Clerk Richards to clearly explain, because it's been quite confusing, I know for me, uh, it would be very helpful as to what we're voting on. And second, I'd like to comment on my second to Alderperson Reinflesh on his amended resolution, which would come up next, I believe, in the vote, would be to, uh, he basically removed his censure of Alderperson Ryan and left the censure of Alderperson Meyer and voted to file my resolution. The reason I seconded that and uh, is because of the uh, comments by Attorney McLean uh, and uh, basically saying that if we go into an ethics board, the, uh, the results would be such as been brought up by Alderperson Ryan would be incompatible with the specifics of our code. If that's an accurate reading, um, or if it's not an accurate reading, uh, please, Attorney McLean, correct me. But um, what we have done here is, I, I, I wish we hadn't, uh, acted as the ethics board. And um, if a uh, censure would be the likelihood of that, based on the reading from Attorney McLean, we would be accomplishing that and allowing us to move on, yet stating clearly that we have drawn a line in the sand as to this type of activity. So I urge you to uh, vote no on the one we're voting on now, and then vote yes on the amended resolution by, or by Alderperson Ryan Flesh. Alderman Smith. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, 
to show respect for both Alderperson Ryan and Alderperson Meyer. I will speak very little on this topic because I believe the more that we elongate this discussion, we're really providing a disservice. I think we're, just, we're speaking of two things here. Number one, issue versus relationship. And I think it's been stated, and I think collaboratively we would agree about the standards, the integrity of this office. Um, and more importantly is this next issue, and that is the letter of the law. And whether or not what we agree to, given what you said, and correct me if I'm wrong, Steve McLean, um, basically there are some fundamental um, fundamental agreements in this document stating that the do's and the don'ts, but basically what we've discussed tonight, that one clause in there, it almost sounds like it's for, it's an ideal, and it's not necessarily something that you can really sink teeth in to. And um, for that sake, um, I'm not going to be supporting anything to pursue it um, forward. However, you did mention that there might be other means to pursue um, for Alderperson Ryan to pursue to make it because again issue versus relationship and that this must be this could be a principle in which somebody would stand and say it's not appropriate. Thank you. Okay. Please call the roll. Um, thank you, Alderman Gisha, for letting me clarify what you're voting on. Um, you have four documents that was changed from three to four with both agreeing. Alderman Rinflesh and Alderman Vanderweel agreed to the motion to file all four documents and censor Alderman Meyer and Ryan, so an I vote would be to do that, to file the four and censure both. An I vote would do that. Both. That's what you're voting on. Please call roll. Manny. No. Meyer. No. Montemayor. No. Rinfleisch. No. Ryan? No. Smith? No. Vanderweel? Aye. For Hasselt? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Gisha? No. Hannah? No. Heidemann? No. Kittleson? No. Clayunas? No. One eye, 14 no's. Motion fails. Motion. Your next motion was by yourself and Alderman Gisha to file all four documents and to censure Alderman Meyer. And I vote would be to file all four and censure Alderman Meyer. Well, we've got... Alderman Montemayor, one more time. Okay, thank you. It, even though it, supposedly it will be the council that's doing the censuring, we have met as the ethics board in actuality, you know you have. We know you know we have. And remember, the ethics violations are the shells. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. This maybe should have been brought up earlier, but Attorney McLean, is it proper for them to vote on something that will affect them pr pretty intensely? Very proper for is who? it proper for this last vote? Was it proper for Alderman Meyer and Alderman Ryan to vote? Or, and then in this next vote, would it be proper for Alderman Meyer to vote? Well, I guess uh, I guess I would have some concern about that. That they would have uh, some interest in it. Obviously, personal interest. Uh, I don't think it affected the outcome previously. Uh, I guess that would be my recommendation, though, to abstain to the effect that. Uh, it involved uh, in particular aldermen, say, being uh, being censored. Uh, as far as uh, a vote, say, by Alderman Ryan censoring Alderperson Meyer, if that's what's coming up next, I don't think uh, Alderman Ryan would have to abstain from that, but I think Alderman uh, uh, Meyer should abstain. I will change my vote to an abstention on the first, on the last vote. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I just have one comment to make. <clears throat> my side of the story has not been heard. You've heard one side, but my side has never been heard. And I just would like to say that. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Gisha. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. 
Uh, I, if that is the case, Alderperson Meyer, then I would assume you would vote to send this to the Ethics Board where it could be heard, which was my intention to the beginning. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. I simply want to say that uh, one aspect of this I think needs to be addressed in the Ethics Board as opposed to tonight, and that is what would an alternative mode of response have been for Alderman Ryan? And I think as opposed to going to the paper, he could have brought a resolution into the council that would have directly dealt with that uh, with us in the body. And I think that would have been appropriate. We need to explore that, discuss that as a possibility for the future. Thank you. Alderman Ryan, second time. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as an explanation, uh, Alderman Manny, uh, the purpose of that conversation was to silence me, to have me crawl into a hole and, and not voice my opinion. So my natural reaction was to voice my opinion so all could hear. Thank you. Okay. Please repeat the motion. The motion on the floor by Alderman Rinflesh and second by Alderman Gisha is to file all four documents and to censure Alderman Meyer. An I vote would be to do that. Call roll. Meyer. Steen. Montemayor. No. Rinfleisch. Aye. Excuse me? Aye. Thank you. Ryan. No. Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Sure. It's a motion would be to file all the documents relating to this and to censure Alderman Meyer. An I vote would be to do that. No. For Hasselt? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? No. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunis? No. Manny? Excuse me? No. Thank you. We have a tie vote, seven ayes, seven noes, and one abstention. Huh. Again, Sorry. The, the motion was to The file. motion is to file all four documents, two ROs and two resolutions, and to censure Alderman Meyer. An aye vote would be to do that. No. The motion fails. Motion fails. <clears throat> Sixteen forty-three. Unless there's any further discussion, will be referred to ethics board. What? That's one of the documents that was filed. Oh. Filed. All of them were filed. All four documents that were relating to this issue have just been filed. It filed no. before. No. 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 Yes, they were. No. Oh, I'm sorry. The motion failed. Excuse me. I apologize. You're right. It's referred. Sorry. <laughs> Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to file these documents. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. Motion and second to I'm file. I'm sorry. I didn't hear who seconded that motion. And which document are we filing? All four that we've been talking about. Okay, thank you. There's a motion and a second to file 1643, 22, 23, and 34 under discussion. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mayor. As we start again here, so now we're at an opportunity to file all the documents and have uh, Alder Person Mayor get not even a, a censure, um, which she seconded the motion to file all the documents now. I don't know if that's protocol or um, so now basically we can now vote to file all the documents and uh, we don't even get the proverbial slap on the wrist it's a travesty if it happens thank you thank you Alderman Ryan Any further discussion uh, discussion there being none please call the roll this is to file all four Montemayor aye Rinfleisch no Ryan no. Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangaman. No. Boren. No. Gisha. No. Hannah. No. Heideman. No. Kittleson. No. Clyunis. No. Manny. No. 
Meyer. Four ayes, ten noes, and one abstention. <coughs> Motion fails. 1643 and all three corresponding documents will be referred to the Ethics Board. Report of Committee 6, 1644, by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operator's license 7667 based on the applicant's failure to cooperate with the committee. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, uh, I make a. Uh, I would like to send make a motion to send this back to committee. Second. Motion and second. Refer back to law and licensing, under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Again, uh, uh, Ms. Caesar was here earlier tonight, and she had contact a couple of days ago with the uh, deputy city attorney Adams, <laughs> stating that there was some confusion about when our last meeting was. I want to give her the benefit of the doubt and give her the benefit of being heard in closed session at our next law and licensing meeting, so that's why I want to refer it back. Okay. Any further discussion on referring back? 1644. There being none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Your Honor, if I could. Uh, Attorney McLean. Thank you. Getting back to the last series of documents, one of those documents is to designate Alderman Bourne as chairman of the committee. Uh, during the discussions yes. regarding all the person uh, Meyer uh, you know if you if you don't act on that tonight and you're referring this to the ethics board you're gonna have a problem when it arrives at the ethics board because all the person Meyer should not be chair or participating in those <laughs> discussions uh, well, Vice President Bourne thank you your honor uh, I would agree with Attorney McLean that I that I would have to be designated as as ch temporary chairman because then it'll be my duty to come up with an agenda for that meeting and probably consult with the city attorney and the and the city clerk with the logistics of doing this ethics board meeting. So I think it is important that the committee uh, vote on me as chairperson if they so choose. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Gisha, would you like to make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage? Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mayor Perez. Uh, I make that motion to put the resolution upon its passage, naming Alderperson Jim Bourne as the temporary head of the Ethics Board uh, until the matter concerning the chairman is resolved. That is 1634. Put upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Rinpleish? Uh, no, I was going to make that motion. None. Alderman Clavinus? Same thing. Okay. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Okay. Uh, Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1645 lies over to November 26. 1646 to be referred. 1647 has been taken care of. Report of committees eight by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, establishing revenue and appropriations for repairs to the Mead Library elevator. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would uh, <clears throat> make a motion to accept and adopt and place the resolution 137.0708 upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Brenner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, doesn't sound like the mic's on. The, uh, this particular um, elevator uh, is really for the movement of, of supplies and books up and down. So this isn't, this isn't a staff elevator. This is a, an elevator that's absolutely required for the function of the library. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the Ryan? Aye. Smith, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Wonkeman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clionis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. and Rinfleisch. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 1649 by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, 
establishing revenue and appropriation for bicycle racks to be added to the Sheboygan Transit buses with a grant from the non-motorized pilot program grant. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to accept the report of committee and adopt uh, <clears throat> the resolution uh, 139708 as upon its passage. Second. Motion to second to accept and adopt the RC. The resolution upon its passage under discussion. There's none. Who's calling on? Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. For Hasselt. Aye. Wongman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. and Ryan. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Report of committee 9 1650 by salary and grievances. Recommended creating subsection C of section 2967 of the 1975 Sheboygan Municipal Code related to abolishing of vacant positions in the classified service from the table of organization after 18 months from passing the attached. Substitute resolution. Thank you, Mayor Perez. Uh, this isn't a new idea. This was done some time ago. Um, you know, many previous councils. It gives to basically two budget cycles to fill a position in a TO, and then uh, if those positions aren't filled, it, it's removed from the TO. Um, there was a, and Alder Person Montemayor can help me, there was a, an amendment to this, made to these documents, and you can, and those two amendments and changes were specific to allowing a, a second kick at the cat, and that was to allow a six-month extension, if at the end of that 18 months, uh, and uh, allows for positions that aren't paid for by tax dollars to be exempt from this, uh, for instance, CDV, those monies, uh, I can never pronounce it right, can be used for those in the 18 months. We get the money in weird sporadic ways, so the 18 months wouldn't be helpful with that, but they are not city tax dollars. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to an accept and file the RC and the substitute ordinance be put upon its passage. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second under discussion. Any? We've had some. There'll be no more from Colorado. Vanderweel. For Hasselt. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. And Smith. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinance is introduced 10, 651 through 653. <coughs> 1654 to be referred. Matters laid over 11. Resolution number 132708 by Alderman Vanderweel authorizes the filing of an application with the U.S. Department of Transportation and authorizing the executing of a contract pertaining to grants for calendar year 2008. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. For Hasselt, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heideman, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Aye. Smith, Aye. and Vanderweel. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1549, resolution number 1330708 by Alderman Hannah, Boren, and Gisha authorizing a transfer of both appropriations in the 2007 budget establishing revenue and appropriations from the police department training aids received from the Wisconsin Department of Justice contributions received for Maywood for electricity building and wells maintenance the transfer of senior center reserve funds to the Friends of Senior Activity Center. Thank you Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Is not, is Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heideman, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Aye. Smith, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. and Verhassel. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1578 RC number 2490708. 
by the Municipal Court Advisory Committee recommended buying documents submitted the Municipal Court Monthly Financial Report as of May 31st, 2007. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1565 RC number 260708 by finance recommending authorizing borrowing from the trust funds of the state of Wisconsin the sum of $5.9 million for the purpose of financing the unfounded Unfounded. 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 <laughs> somebody, somebody put unfounded there. <laughs> unfounded. Please make that notation. The un <laughs> for the purpose of financing the unfunded pension liability with the Wisconsin Retirement Fund and passing the substitute resolution. <laughs> Thank you. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and place the substitute resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call roll. Warren? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Wangerman? Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. 1568, General Order Number 600708 by Alderman Vanderweel, Rinfleisch, Kittleson, Ryan, and Smith. Repeating and recreating section 42-66 of the municipal code so as to provide an exception to the requirement for an ambulance license. I'll move that in. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to put the general ordinance upon this passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clionis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Smith, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. and Boren. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 1655 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. That goes to law and licensing? 1568 is an RO by the Building Inspection Department submitting the report of the Building Inspection Department for the month of October 2007. It goes to Public Protection and Safety. 1657 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting communication from the Presidents of the Sheboygan Professional Police Association, Sheboygan Police Supervisors Association, and City Hall Workers, Local 1564, stating regarding health concerns for employees at the site of the new police building. Then we'll go to Public Protection and Safety also. 1658 is an ordinance granting Richard Poole as heirs and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of South Business Drive for the purpose of constructing and maintaining a fence. That goes to City Plan. 1659 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a claim from Sherry Campbell for alleged damages to her vehicle when a city worker was cutting the grass in the median with a riding lawnmower and a rock got kicked up and hit her car. That will go to Risk Management. 1660 is an RO by the Deputy Finance Director Treasurer submitting the trial balance of the city stating the financial condition of each fund for the period ending September 30, 2007 and pursuant to subsection 6209, a statement of receipts and disbursements of the city for the months of September 2006 and 2007. That goes to finance. Need a motion to adjourn? Second. Motion to second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Stand adjourned.